Good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome Reno Thomas, Executive Vice President for Media Operations, Engineering, and IT at Disney ABC Television Group, Disney, comma, ABC Television Group, hyphen, ABC Television Group, <laughs> as the first speaker in our View from the Top series for the fall semester. This series gives our college community a chance to hear from leading thinkers on technology innovation, and the driving force behind it is, of course, engineering education. I'd like to thank the Berkeley chapter of the Society of Women Engineers, SWE, for co-sponsoring today's lecture. I'm also honored to welcome the alumni and members of our Dean Society who are joining us today. The loyalty and support of our alumni and friends of the college play a key role in advancing our mission at Berkeley Engineering, which is to educate leaders, create knowledge, and serve society. Before I introduce our guest, I invite you to mark, our, mark your calendars for another special event coming to the college. On Friday, October 7th, we will celebrate the five-year anniversary of the Fung Institute for Engineering Leadership and their new home at Shires Hall. So those of you that don't know it, you know, Shires Hall is part of the Graduate Theological Union on Ridge Street. I invite you to come there, not only for the union, but for some spiritual enrichment as well. It's really one of the most beautiful, I'm not kidding, it's really one of the most beautiful contemplative spaces in Berkeley. And I know this because uh, whenever I used to sort of grind down to a halt in my research, I used to go to that uh, hill, which we had dubbed Holy Hill, to, uh, you know, to in search of en 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 nourishment. So, uh, so please join us for this exciting milestone. Uh, more information on all Berkeley Engineering events may be found on our website, engineering.berkeley.edu. Now, let me introduce today's speaker, Renu Thomas. Renu is Executive Vice President, Media Operations, Engineering, and IT for Disney and the ABC Television Group. As a member of the senior leadership team, Renu works to ensure strategic alignment of the group's investments, initiatives, and business growth objectives, including global expansion, organic growth into new markets, and new product slash service development and deployment. Renu joined the Walt Disney Company in 2000 as vice president for operations for ABC News, where she was responsible for setting the overall strategy and leading the operations for studios, control rooms, editing, and graphics for all ABC News programs, including uh, Good Morning America, World News, Nightline, 2020, and This Week. She helped prepare ABC News for the future by deploying new technology and improving production and business processes. Prior to joining ABC News, uh, Renu was the director of production for McNeil Era Productions, where she oversaw the technical and production management for the new Sahar with Jim Lehrer and related documentaries. Before joining McNeil Lehrer Productions, she served as the director of studio operations at NBC Universal, where she led the management team for the network's news and entertainment studios and control rooms at uh, Rockefeller Center. That's the rock, you know, those of you that have been there. So, uh, Renu graduated from Cornell with a Bachelor of Science and Master of Engineering in Operations Research and Industrial Engineering. So uh, Phil, this Phil, Phil Kavinsky said, yo, they got, they, we say I-E-O-R and they say O-R and I-E. So this is uh, Operations Research and Industrial Engineering. Throughout her career, she has fostered innovation and led change by finding opportunity in people and technology, all the while championing the idea that for organizations to thrive, they must continue to break barriers and deploy cutting edge technology, which is the focus of Renu's talk today. You know, we are really fortunate to have such an accomplished leader and you know, a representative of such a major uh, conglomerate. So please join me in giving a warm Berkeley welcome to Renu Thomas. Thank you, Dean Sassery. My name is Renu Thomas, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Media Operations, Engineering, and IT for Disney ABC. I've seen all the you know, flyers out in the engineering area. I took a picture for my mom to <laughs> show her that it was all advertised. I also want to introduce Michael Pollard. He's the Executive Director 
of Technology and Operations, and he's also my Chief of Staff. We've had such a great day here. I've already got the bear pin. I guess I'm an official Berkeley person now. <laughs> we saw Jacobs Hall. Um, you know, we've seen the work you're doing with prosthetics, with cell scope. It's, it's been humbling. I said that to Michael before. The work that you're doing here, the title of my talk is Breaking Barriers and Leading Change. You're all doing that every single day. I commend you and thank you for that. The closest to anything medical life-saving <laughs> I get to do, Gray's Anatomy. And we know how real that is. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I always wanted to be an engineer. In fact, I applied early decision to Cornell, but the first barrier I had to break was people's expectations of me. My dad and I went to the senior year counseling session, and the guidance counselor looked at me and said, why do you want to be an engineer? You should be a liberal arts major. You're editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. You're on the debate team. Well, I didn't listen to him. I went on to Cornell and got my Bachelor of Science in Operations Research and Industrial Engineering and also my Master of Engineering. And Phil and I talked about this, Industrial Engineering Operations Research here. I'm kind of biased toward the ORIE, but at the end of the day, Industrial Engineering Operations Research, we really look at optimization. We look at people and processes and look at how do we make them efficient, effective, my team and I do that every single day. We're the internal consultants to our business partners. We look at workflows, we look at innovation, we look at technology, and we help with the creative process. And it's not just OR, IE, IE, OR individuals I have on the team. We have computer scientists. Michael's degree is in computer science. We have electrical engineers. We have mechanical engineers. And the reason for that is engineering gives you such a great foundation. It gives you a foundation in problem solving, critical thinking set, skill sets, and analytical skill sets that can be used anywhere. Now, my first job out of college, I joined GE Aerospace. As a manufacturing plant, we build circuit boards for military satellites. I'm really excited about my first day. I have my new suit on. I bought my new briefcase. I get there. They tell me, you've got a mentor. I'm thinking this is exactly what I thought the real world was going to be. Well, my mentor pulls me aside, and he goes, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> You're an Ivy League grad. You make more money than me. And he just walks away. And I stood there dumbfounded going, is this the real world? Is this really what I want to be doing? Well, I was really lucky that some more seasoned engineers took me under their wings. They taught me manufacturing. They taught me the industry. They taught me the real world. And I've been really lucky throughout my career. The people have seen something in me and given me that opportunity. I landed in television through GEE, one of my managers was at NBC and called me and said, hey, would you like to come over? And I ended up taking a job as a Six Sigma project manager. Never knew, you know, was a viewer of television, didn't know what control rooms did, none of that. If you ask anyone of my peers today, a lot of them will tell you, oh, I went on a studio tour when I was four years old. I came home, took apart the television. That's when I decided what I was going to be when I grew up. That's not how I ended up in television. I kind of fell upon it. But after my first year as a Six Sigma project manager, once again, the equivalent of my position today saw that spark in me. And I got promoted to run studios at 30 Rock. That was a 24-7 position. And it was you know, running shows from Today Show to Saturday Night Live. It's a big risk on his part, but at the same time, it was the people in the control room 
who taught me television. It was the audio engineers. It was the technical directors, the producers, the directors. I, in turn, came in, looked at things with a fresh perspective. I looked at their workflows. I looked at their technology. And I gave recommendations. And I ended up helping them as much as they helped me. And that's something I think when we as engineers sometimes overlook. It's those interpersonal skills and communication skills. We can come up with the best technology. We can come up with the best workflows. But if you can't communicate that and get people to be there with you to implement, then they're not going to be a success. I continued my television journey, as you heard, and was at Disney ABC. And I was running operations. My team and I were looking at how do you use an automated control room for a control room. A traditional control room for live news or any sort of live news program, it's very siloed with very specific processes. And we looked at that. And especially as an industrial engineer, I'm looking at it going, how can we consolidate some of this? And how do we make it more efficient? And you know, I went to talk to the editorial team about this. And they looked at me and said, this is the way we've been doing television for 50 years. We're just fine. <gasps> well, just fine isn't good enough. At least for me, it wasn't. But I didn't go straight to World News, our flagship show, to say, hey, let's try to implement this. I went to our overnight news programs. A little less risk there. I partnered with them. My team and I looked at their workflows. We looked at how can we implement this technology with them. And you know, it wasn't easy. There were times when we had to look, tweak the technology, tweak the workflows. But at the end of the day, we were able to streamline their process that the savings they achieved from that, they were able to put back to the content, to the screen, for the viewer. And other shows followed. They saw those savings, and they saw that it was actually adding value to their programs. And after that, all of our news programs, including World News, implemented the automated control room. We were the first network news organization to implement that. And that was a really important lesson in that you may have a vision, you may have you know, lots of innovation you want to do, but other people may have doubts. And unless you can communicate that vision and help carry them through your journey with you, then it's not going to go anywhere. And in terms of innovation, I mean, at Disney, we stand on a long line of innovators. <laughs> But there's no one more innovative than Walt Disney himself. When Walt wanted to create the first animated feature, people looked at him and said, who's going to watch a cartoon? Well, we all know how iconic a film Snow White's become and how many animated features have followed and continue to follow. It's the same with television. In the 20s and 30s, people looked at TV and said, is there really a future? Is there any monetization value with this? So other studio execs viewed it as a threat. They wouldn't even allow television to be set in their movies. They wouldn't show a TV receiver. Walt saw the opposite. Walt looked at it as an opportunity. He saw it as an opportunity to promote his films and the theme park that he was about to build. He went to ABC in 1954 and struck a $40 million programming deal. And in that time, that was the biggest programming deal and quite a lot of money to air original content. That allowed him to build Disneyland, which I'm sure all of us have enjoyed some theme park of Disney at some point. And it changed our industry and our company. So I want to take a moment and share some of the content we create, the magic that we get to get, share with millions of viewers every single day. These are the days we'll never forget, just like we dreamed and it's perfect. Oh, we got to steal the show. Welcome to the view, y'all.
Changing this person's life forever. You are responsible for this moment. Did you ever look back, wonder why you want to know? I can handle this. I know. I know you. I know you can handle this. Forget that it's all about love. Did you ever look back, wishing you could change? <laughs> yeah. But you come to find out that you, you have to stop keeping secrets from me then. You gotta walk You're right. I want to be a part of this family more than I have ever wanted anything in my whole life. Why didn't the FBI and Apple team up far earlier and get this done? No, I never look back. Every moment we get with you is a gift. <laughs> you called me a gift. No. Ah, and I am never gonna let you forget. Okay, no, I was an I emotional distraction. Okay, you're a gift. I am a gift. Ruby. I no, I'm a gift. No, you're a No, I'm a gift. This is a make or break moment. Let's stick together on this one. Imagination and innovation are everywhere. I don't know how many times I've seen that, and I so love it. So, and my personal favorite characters are Olivia Pope and Doc McStuffin. So someone can probably psychoanalyze that, but <laughs> anyway, but when we as engineers also look at that, we look, see the engineering and technology that goes behind all that. Graphics, animation requires different technology than live news gathering versus studio production. I want to take a poll. How many of you watch TV still on a traditional TV set? How many of you watch it on your mobile device of some sort? Okay. I wouldn't be asking that question five years ago. Our consumer is changing so quickly and the needs of our consumer is changing so quickly like Walt did in the 20s and 30s, we need to be able to anticipate that change and be able to meet that change today and for what they may not even know they need tomorrow. And Disney ABC has been leading that change. In 2005, when Steve Jobs showed our CEO, Bob Iger, Lost on a video iPod, I don't know how many of you remember Lost or what a video iPod looked like. <laughs> <laughs> but we were the first network to put it on iTunes. Now, you know, today, how many more devices and how many other ways do you watch shows? We are continuing that innovation and something that I'm really proud of that my team and I are leading in the industry and we patented this um, technology. We're doing broadcast from the cloud. A traditional broadcast center, and that really is our broadcast center in New York. It's uh, over 130,000 square feet, miles and miles of copper cable, racks and racks of equipment. Broadcasting from the cloud, Michael. It actually looks like this. This is actually the uh, live Disney Channel. Uh, running from the cloud. If I touch it, I may take us off the air, but this is, this is real. So that has become an infrastructure that plays and works through this. 
So we, you know, I, I joke all the time that one of our guys that, you know, he's going to be running the network from a beach in the Bahamas, but that's literally is what we can do now. And what that gives us in terms of flexibility and capability to meet what our consumer needs. In the past, in a traditional broadcast center, it would take months and months of engineering time and over a million dollars worth of capital to launch a new network, for example. Now, it'll take about two, three hours and about $1,500 in expense. So the power that that gives us and what we can offer our consumer is huge. But it's not just behind the scenes that we're using innovation and technology. It's in production. We're using virtual reality. We're using augmented reality. We're using machine learning. And we've been talking about that today in terms of how, you know, what you're doing here at Berkeley and what we're doing at a Disney ABC. So I've always wanted to say this. I want to throw out a pop quiz since, you know, I usually don't get that opportunity and I've always been on the other side. So we're going to stop and do a quick pop quiz. There are no grades involved, but we've got some great swag. We've got some Disney ABC footballs. So I'm going to let Mike do the pop quiz. All right. All right. I hope my, my arm is warmed up here. All right. So question one. What is the name of the law firm in ABC Scandal? But before you answer, I, I, you were first, but... That's Olivia Pope, for those of you who don't know Olivia Pope. <laughs> Very stylish, Olivia. <laughs> All right, so uh, you were, I think, were the first. Uh, ding, 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 ding! All right, I'm going to throw it. Here we go. Oh, you have to give it to her. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. That, that was the warm-up throw. All right. You're supposed to have the better arm than me. I know, I know. I didn't stretch it. All right. Next question: Which show features previous hopefuls from The Bachelor and Bachelorette? Uh. Bachelor of Paradise. Ding, 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 ding. All right. I think I can make this throw. All right. Nice, 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 nice. Next question. What was Zac Efron's breakout role on Disney Channel? Oh, uh, who was first? Who was first? Were you first? Yes. Yes? <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh, well, that's, that's good. We'll give you credit for High School Musical. All right. Here we go. All right. Nice grab. All right. Now, this is a hard one. Next question, what does HDR stand for? Anyone know? What? Yes! All right, let's see if we can make this throw. All right, here we go. Oh, almost! Almost, that was my bad throw. All right, nice, good answer. All right, and who is the toy doctor for the preschool set? You are correct. <laughs> but you have two footballs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, 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 almost. All right, almost. <laughs> She's got you need two footballs. But well, you did well tonight. That's awesome. All right. Last question. We've got a winner right. on. Who's first? Who is the actor starring as our next unlikely president of the United States? And I got to do the correct. shameless plug, September 21st. It's an awesome show. If you haven't seen the promos for it, watch it. Really, really good show. All right. Thanks, everyone, for participating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for humoring us with that. So throughout our conversation, you've heard me talk about mentoring and how important mentoring has been in my career and my success. I've had really great mentors, and I still do have great mentors. I'm a mentor. Mike was actually one of my mentees a couple years ago, and that's how we met. My team and I take the mentoring role really importantly, and it's probably the most fulfilling part of our careers. But 
while you're here at Berkeley and when you go to your first jobs, your internships, find those role models, find those mentors. But at the same time, remember you're reverse mentoring. You're giving new ways of problem solving. You're bringing a fresh new perspective. You may be looking at technology differently. So you're going to be giving back to your mentors in that organization just as much as they're giving to you. And when you get to that place where you're able to, pay it forward. It's also great to be sitting here and seeing female engineers in the audience. Thank you to the Society of Women Engineers who sponsored me today. It's still not enough. Women in engineering is something I'm really passionate about. I know that Berkeley has the Girls in Engineering program. We need to get girls to get excited and want to be here. And then I want to see more of you be in roles like I'm in and other more executive roles where you can be those role models. But we need to get more en female engineers. But the good thing is I'm really proud to be working for a company like Disney. We, our stories reflect the world we live in. And at Disney ABC, we're able to t tell stories that portray you know, positive role models for girls and authentic, meaningful portrayals for women. But the reason we're able to create these strong, complex, smart women on the screen is because we have strong, complex, smart women behind the screen, behind the camera and in our executive offices. Over 50% of our organization is women. And the majority of our executive vice presidents are female. I'm really proud to be working for a company that walks the talk. Finally, as I leave you, this is one of my favorite wall quotes. If you can dream it, you can do it. So I would tell you, don't let anyone tell you what your vision should be. Don't let anyone tell you what you can or can't do with an engineering degree. You can do anything. You can break barriers and you can lead change. The foundation and the education that you're getting here and especially with an engineering background, you can go do anything and you can help the world. But I hope some of you are sitting there going, you know what, Disney ABC would be a fun place to work. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a Disney career website. Um, I would ask that, you know, go look at that. But I'll, I'll also tell you, I love my job. I use my engineering degree every single day. And I don't think there's many people who can say that, especially as, you know, as long as I've been out of school, I use it every single day. And we look for problem solvers. We look for innovators. And our journey, our journey is telling the best stories with the best people process and technology. So I'd love to see some of you come join us for internships or jobs out of school. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to be part of the Berkeley community. It's been, it's been a great day. I, I think it's been more than Mike and I even hoped for. And I really, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the hospitality. Sure. Mike, you want to come up? Yeah, some microphones going around. I think uh, the plan is to give students first dibs. Is that right? Thank you. All right. All right. Hey, if you can uh, tell us name, year, major, or anything else you want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my name is Ali Sheska. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering here. Um, and my question for you is, um, being a very obviously adept leader and um, really socially engaged um, as an engineer, what drove you to pursue a master's in engineering over an MBA? 
like I said, I always wanted to be an engineer, and I think it was that Master of Engineering program, which I know Berkeley has too, it gave me that, still that focus with the technical, but also that business foundation. And so it kind of combined the best of both worlds. Hi, my name is Alicia. I'm a second year bioengineer, and I absolutely love Disney. You guys were my childhood, so this is so <laughs> cool. I love Mulan. I grew up watching Mulan every weekend. My parents hated me. Um, but so thank you so much for being here. And I guess my question is do you guys have any open positions or like thoughts yes, on absolutely. bioengineers? I think there were 192 <laughs> engineering related positions in the search we showed. Specifically for bioengineers, though, these. I know I'm not the only bioengineer out there who wants to work for Disney. We actually have in our group. Uh, one of our managers of, of our operations analyst program, which is kind of like our incubator for, for up and coming talent, has a, a bioengineering degree. So doesn't get better than that. <laughs> but for, really for us, uh, 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 for us, just the, the engineering curriculum in general it teaches you how to think. And there's nothing that we need and, and, and like more than critical thinkers who aren't afraid to be open and tackle new challenges. So very often, we look at talent and try to find uh, opportunities within the organization that matches that person. And sometimes, uh, we put them in a position for that to be discovered through incubator programs like our analyst program. And if you heard from my journey, I mean, if people hadn't seen that spark in me, I wouldn't be where I am today, and that's what we try to do in terms of how we look for talent. Alan, right here. All right, uh, my name is Alan Young. So I want to ask a two-part question. So since you, you mentioned about the incubators, mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask two questions uh, for uh, uh, like entrepreneurs in here. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have some entrepreneurs that are, you know, will be entrepreneurs in the audience. The first one is that uh, you know, uh, in Disney, do you guys actually have any you know, incubators, um, you know, entrepreneurs with technology from Berkeley can actually partner or even go there and then actually start their own startup you know, at, the right, you know, at your facility, number one. Uh, number two is that as a leader, whether you are leading a, um, a startup or leading a you know, major corporation like, you, uh, like yours, um, how do you actually balance your you know, work life you know, um, you know, trade off um, and so on and so forth? Thank you so much. All right. I think with the incubators, I think this, that's where we're here, just starting conversations and understanding where we can work better together. There is a Disney there Accelerator is a program. program, which I know is at the Disney corporate level. Right. Work-life balance, you want to start? Well, you know, and just even a little bit more yeah. about the entrepreneurial thing. Um, yes, start, being an entrepreneur and starting your own business, that's one thing. But in actuality, we're entrepreneurs mm -hmm. every day. We're actually inventing new solutions that are literally going to change the business. And yes, it is for the benefit of yeah. Disney, uh, but we still get to live that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, so it's n there's other avenues to, to experience that other than just the, uh, the, the incubator program. Um, Work-life balance. you know. Um, that's one of the benefits of working at Disney ABC. I mean, Disney is probably one of the most family-friendly, uh, quality-of-life companies uh, that there is to work for. Uh, but work-life balance is, it's really, it's not work-life balance, it's actually just balance. And each of us have to make sure that we uh, leave the office. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way relationship. But the good news is that Disney is the type of place that helps you with that. There's uh, lots of opportunities to do extracurricular things with, with peers, and uh, we also encourage uh, outreach and volunteer efforts, and we also encourage taking your vacation time because we all need to reset. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Elisa Ramirez. I'm a senior studying industrial engineering and operations research. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask what, um, what part of your job do you find most challenging? Mm. And what do you do to you know, overcome these challenges? I mean, I think for 
our group. We are the internal consultants. We're the entrepreneurs selling new technology, new ways of doing mm -hmm. things. And you've got to persuade and show your internal partners, your internal customers that come on this journey with us. It will help. It will help what we all end up doing in terms of putting the content on the screen. So it's that's probably one of the more difficult ones right. because people are saying, this is the way we've been doing it for 50 years, and why are you coming and trying to change my world and trying to show them this is actually a win-win for all of us. And, you know, and I said this earlier to someone, a lot of times when you're with in a creative process, people will be on their iPhone. They drove their Tesla to work. And then you walk into a meeting with them, and they're like, whoa, I'm not a tech person. You're the <laughs> tech person. And it's like, no, we're all mm -hmm. technologists in one way or the other. Hi, uh, my name is Jackson. I'm doing civil engineering. And my favorite Disney movie is Star Wars, mm -hmm. the newest one. <laughs> um, and my question is, um, sorry. <laughs> Which the oh which episode? Well, I mean the most recent one is the only one made strictly by Disney. You don't want to open this can of worms. <laughs> anyway, um, I I've seen you know some links to um, like Disney University um, and mm -hmm. Disney training programs like that. Yeah. Um, and I was just sort of curious if you could speak about what that experience is like for you know maybe recent graduates and, and what the benefits are of of pursuing education through Disney in that way. You want to start? It? I mean, there's there's a there's yeah. a lot of opportunities to do that. We have a, a very very mature college program, uh, and lots of opportunities in the college program actually create it feeds opportunities in all parts of Disney. Uh, but we're, at Disney ABC Television, where we're from, uh, those types of opportunities we look to create through our internships. Uh, we look to create through apprenticeships. So really, uh, what you should do is keep looking on the career site because all of those opportunities are advertised and we're actually looking for people like you. That's actually why we made yeah. the flight. We, we, <laughs> we, we want you to be interested in our opportunities. Please reach out. Please go to the career site. and. Let us know so that we can find you. And you think when you're watching that program, you know, on the BART coming in or whatever, you say, wow, that's technology that drives that's that. That's right. Final question, and then we're going to do that. Lydia should have the final question. She ran two. Lydia, be ready. Um, I'm, um, I'm Saba. I'm a um, junior industrial engineering and operation research student. And um, I guess I'm a, a Marvel chick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was wondering, um, for you, what challenges have you faced regarding your gender and discrimination mm. towards gender? And um, I don't know if you're a mother um, and whether you want to disclose that or like share that, it's uh, it's your choice. But have you, how have you overcome those challenges regarding the fact that you are a woman and this is essentially a man's world? I work for her, by the way. <laughs> 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 I think um, as I've gotten more senior, people know who I am. People know who I am in the industry. Starting out, and I said this earlier to a couple people, you know, I'd walk into a meeting, and, there, and it didn't matter if it was in when I was in manufacturing or if I was in TV. I may be the only female in the conference room. And there would be people who didn't know my background at all. And I'd wait for the right moment, because I, I am small, and I you know, s may not appear to look all technical to some six-foot man who comes and starts talking to my male peers. I'll drop in that technical expertise in. I'll say I'm an engineer. And that kind of lets them step back and say, oh, she does know what she's talking about. But I also think. You have a seat at the table, and I think that's what I tell my female mentees. It's like, 
walk in there, don't sit in the back. Go sit at the table. Make sure that people know who you are. And it's been male mentors who've helped me throughout my career because I have been traditionally working in a male world. But it's also part of paying it forward. That's why I'm so passionate about getting more females. My niece is an engineering student. It's something I want to see more of. And just like that guidance counselor told me, I didn't look like the typical engineer. Well, none of us are a typical engineer. So, and I'm not a mother, but I have a niece and nephew, and I have a lot of colleagues who are mothers. And that's, that's also the great part of Disney, that we are such a family-friendly company. Mm -hmm. And when you say Disney, people are happy. It is the happiest place on earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lydia, no, no pressure. You have, a, you have a pilot or something to talk about? <laughs> you have a final question? How old are your kids? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Right over everything. So okay, I really, that's truly perfect. I really appreciate it. Last night it was about a uh, magazine. Okay? You, you so won those. Really you won those. Fair and square. We didn't even know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> oh, good. Here's the mic. Here's the mic. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop. Why do you think Disney or ABC, you mentioned, has uh, more than 50% women um, in the exec, you know, in the vice, executive vice presidents? tier versus other NBC versus CBS or what have you. Why do you think that is? What do you think contributed towards that very high uh, ratio? I mean, it's the characters I put on the screen. I, you, you see what we put on the screen and how much we value diversity. Mm -hmm. I think that's also reflected in how our leadership is and how we foster that environment. And it's also what a great company it is to work for. It is family friendly. Bert, let's, uh, you can talk, we, we will uh, sort of stop the formal program. Why don't you talk to Rainy? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, Rainy, this has been a fantastic afternoon you. with you. And as we knew it would be, I have to say. Uh, please join me in thanking Rainy for, uh, for, our, for our wonderful talk today. And so. Thank you. And Mike. Thank you. I got my own shirt. Oh, wow. Full awesome. membership Thank is not you. complete. Cool. I, I love it. Nice. The, uh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Can I, I love just this. make one comment? And I'm glad I got this one instead of that one. This is Because I said when I saw these shirts before, I'm like, how cool. They're not these big, oversized men's shirts. They actually fit. Really cool. <laughs> get in closer, get in closer. All right. <laughs> and I'd like to awesome, thank, thank uh, once again, Cheers. Sweet. These, yes, uh, thank you. Folks are sweet and, uh, thank you. For co-sponsoring <laughs> the event. Thank you all for coming and go Bears. All right. <laughs>